Well done, you started using OBS to enhance your video calls. There's a ton of things that you can do with OBS to zoom or teams like a pro. So if you're new to it, watch my beginner's tutorial up here. There's one thing that is integrated in Zoom that is pretty handy, that is the blur background effect. In this video, we'll see how to replicate that effect in OBS and actually even better, how to use it to enhance your own screen communication, like in this case. Let's go to OBS. In order to use the blur effect in OBS, we need to install the StreamFX plugin. You can find it by simply googling StreamFX OBS plugin. Click on the first result you get, and you'll be directed to the OBS plugin page. To download it, click at the top right. You can download the testing release, but I suggest you get the latest production ready release. So click on this link, scroll down, and then if you're on Windows like me, click on the .exe file. Now simply double click on the executable file to install the plugin. You may have to close OBS and restart it in order for the changes to take place. So let's open OBS. If everything went right, you will see at the top the Stream Effects tab. That means that your plugin has installed correctly. And let's now create a first scene where I will put my webcam. I'll call it webcam and add a video capture device source. As I'm using my Sony camera as a webcam, I'll name it Sony. As you see, I have a messy bookshelf behind me that I'd like to blur out. To do so, let's apply a filter to the webcam scene. With the installation of the StreamFX plugin, now you'll see a blur option. Click on it, and you'll be presented with different options. There are different types of blur effect, box, box linear, Gaussian, Gaussian linear, and dual filtering. I recommend you to always use the dual filtering type, as this is the least resource demanding for your CPU. So let's choose the dual filtering type and leave the area subtype. With the size slider you can increase or decrease the blur effect. A value between 4 and 5 is good for me. As you see the blur effect is now applying to the whole picture. To only apply it to an area, click on apply a mask. There are three mask type options, region, image and source. That means that you can select a region or use an image as a mask, or also mask the camera with the source. This last option is very convenient in some cases, so watch the video till the end to learn how to use it. For now, let's stick to the region mask type. You can use the left, top, right and bottom edge sliders to adjust the region. What I'll do is to select a region that contains myself, and then click on invert region, so the blur will apply to the region outside of the selected area. Let's see how it looks like. The edges of the region are a bit sharp, and the tip of the plant is not blurred out. So let's fix it. So let's go back to our filter and play with the feather era and feather shift slider to make the edges smoother. And there we go. We have replicated the zoom blur background effect. Actually, there is a blurred region to my right and left, and if I extend my arms, this will result blurred. I need to keep this effect for the bookshelf, but actually I don't need to blur the bottom region to my right. And let's say I also like the lamp. I can use a combination of blur effects to blur only selected areas in the image. So let me remove the first blur effect and start from scratch. Let's add again a blur effect, dual filtering type, let's apply a mask and blur out only the bookshelf. Now let's add a second blur effect. Yes, indeed, you can add multiple instances of the same effect to a source. Let's choose again the same settings, dual filtering type and apply a mask. I will now mask only the plant by playing with the right edge and bottom edge sliders. Let's apply some feather era and feather shift effects. So I've now blurred out the bookshelf and the plant, whereas the lamp looks clear and also the region to my right. If you notice, the image is not so fluid and that could be due to the fact that adding a second blur effect has started loading the CPU too much. What you could do to solve this is to decrease the blur intensity from 5 to say 4 or 3. Let's now take the blur effect to the next level and use it not only to hide things, but actually to enhance our own video communication. I have again my messy bookshelf behind me. Instead of only blurring it out, I want to put some graphic elements on it. Including graphic elements on a blur background gives some depth to your image and makes it nicer. Let's add another scene where I will put the graphic elements and call it info. I will add two text sources in it, one with the name of my channel and another one that's a call to action. The yellow text is not fit in the window, but you'll see in a moment why is that. Let's now also add a color source to this scene. 
and choose black color. At the moment you only see the edges of the shape as it's black color on black background. But let's use the handles to position it and resize it properly. Let's now make this color source semi-transparent. And we do that by adding a color correction filter. In the color correction filter I'm able to make the source semi-transparent by setting the opacity to 50 for example. Let's now create a third scene which will be our final scene containing all the elements that we want to stream to zoom. Let's call it final scene. In this scene let's add the two scenes that we have created as sources. The info scene and the webcam scene. Making sure that the webcam scene is underneath the info one. We have some text a semi-transparent container and behind it the messy bookshelf. We still need to blur it though. To do so let's click on the webcam source in the final scene and add a blur filter. Select dual filtering, choose a size that you want, like 4 is a good value for me, but now as you see the blur is applying to the whole image. So let's click to apply a mask and finally in the mask type let's click on source. Eventually we're solving the mystery. And in the source mask let's select the info scene. Let's use the Mask Alpha filter and set it to your preferred value. For me 2.5 works well. And voila! We have used the scene as a mask to blur out a portion of our webcam and add some graphic elements on it. Let's go back to the Info scene and click on the Call to Action text and apply a scroll filter. Let's adjust the speed and the width and add some space at the beginning of the text. So we have a nice scrolling effect. The advantage of using a scene as a mask is that if I now move the content in the scene, the mask will move with it. The last thing to do is to start your virtual camera and connect it to Zoom or your preferred video conferencing platform. Thanks for watching. Now it's time to hit that subscribe button to help me reach 1000 subscribers. See you in my next digital tip.